My dad was deployed and I never heard from him again. We kind of have had a reconnection since then, but the majority of my life he's not been in it. And it never bothered me though, because some love just isn't meant to last. I kind of try to look on the highlights of life and him not being around might have been a good thing. Um, I lived my mom off and on, bouncing from one place to another, another, but it was kind of like an adventure in the way. What kind of creepy neighbor was I going to have next? I really loved people watching when I was younger, so. Uh, also, I didn't really know where I was going to be sleeping at night. I sometimes slept on the couch. Some places that we lived in, I slept on the floor. Sometimes I was lucky enough to have my own bed. Um, but I never really thought of it as like a bad thing. I kind of embraced it and thought of it more like a really cool sleepover that never really ended. Um, not many people really knew though that what I was going through. Not only did I not really share about it, but I didn't really think anyone cared. And, but I did have one constant thing in my life and that was my grandparents. Now my grandparents, like most grandparents are, were the greatest people in my whole life. <laughs> not only did they give me sneak me treats on the side, but they took me on camping trips, made sure that I had the essentials in my life as in school clothes, made sure I had a proper meal, made sure that I was making friends and staying out of trouble as much as I could, being a feisty redheaded child. Um, they supported me beyond any means that they had to. They didn't have to give up their whole lives to take care of me. They were in their older years, so they could have uh, retired and done their own thing, but they didn't. They took me on, and that was more than I could ever thank them for. And all I can hope is that I'm making them happy today. Um, my grandpa passed away with, from cancer about almost four years ago. He was my best friend. Everything that I do now is for him and my grandma. Uh, losing him was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. It was kind of a shock because he denied this sometimes. He didn't really want to talk about it. He's a very gruff, manly guy, very macho, sold industrial tools for a living. He didn't want to think that anything could take him down, but sadly it did. And all I can learn from that is to embrace who I am, embrace my own feelings, and just be one with my body, and accept the fact that bad things can happen to me, and how am I going to overcome it. My mom was an interesting character in my book of life. It was the constant question of whether or not that she was going to be playing the villain that week, or playing the role of a loving mother. <coughs> I had a feeling that she was bipolar in a way. She was not abusive in the sense that she beat me senseless, but she was abusive in the way of making me my, hate myself and my own body. She would make me look at myself in the mirror and she would just talk really badly about me. And mothers aren't supposed to do that. She would pinch my stomach when I was younger and I would be like seven years old and she would buy me clothes that were too small and tell me that I needed to fit that. It was a really weird relationship that I never really talked about with anyone until now. And besides the therapist that I'm seeing here at Clark, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. <laughs> um, but it was never something I really talked about. All my friends' moms seemed really fun and, you know, outgoing and caring. They would bake us cookies at sleepovers. I never had that. So when people were nice to me like that, I kind of pushed them away. I was like, why are you being nice? Why are you being a mom? <laughs> I wasn't used to that. And it took a really long time for me to accept that and to embrace it and kind of say, yeah, I had a really screwed up childhood, but honestly, it's made me who I am today, and that's okay. Um, let's see here. But everything was kind of normal for me. I never really thought that, you know, I was suffering in any way. Maybe I was on the outside. You guys have been thinking, holy crap, this girl's got it bad. But, like, I, I really did have a great childhood. My grandparents made sure that I had the fun soccer trips and I was a part of sports and did all the other things that normal kids got to do. But, you know, there's always that caveat of I'd have to go home to this crazy mom. <laughs> but I digress. I lived. Uh, so I kept pretty busy, though. My mom was an odd motivator for me. She was kind of like, all right, how do I not want to be like her? I'm going to end up the exact opposite of that woman because I don't want to ever be that crazy. <laughs> So I was heavily involved in high school, AP classes. Uh, I was in Key Club for four years of high school. I was the vice president for the first year and then president throughout the other three years. I was heavily involved in community service, whether it be through Key Club or not. I was the senior class vice president of my high school and our graduating class had about 100 students. So, I mean, I was the leader of a very few amount, but it was still pretty rad. <laughs> 
Also, as a part of the Medical Explorers program for two years, so we explored different medical opportunities and kind of careers that we were looking into. It really boosted my confidence that I did want to be in service. So during my senior year of high school, I joined a CNA program and got my CNA license right out of high school and started working as soon as I moved here. Um, I was also an admission mentor for freshmen, so for my last three years of high school, I would go to students' homerooms and make sure they're doing their homework, kind of be like a liaison between teachers and students and say like, hey Jimmy, you haven't turned in your homework in like three weeks, you should probably do that if you want to graduate. So we kind of just had a cool relationship going on that was really inspiring to my leadership. I really wanted to help students. I also was really involved in sports. I was in track and field and JV soccer. And I was also a football manager for three years of high school. So I kept really busy <laughs> to distract me from what was going on at home. I didn't like being at home. I didn't like being where I was supposed to feel comfortable. I felt more comfortable at school. Some people wonder how I managed all of this while knowing everyone in my class, staying really social, and I looked like I had it all together, but I didn't. I was really depressed inside, and I didn't really come to terms with that until I moved here. I kind of, my first year at Clark, actually my first quarter or so, I realized I was really lonely. I had all these friends that I had left behind at home, but I didn't really know how to make friends. I had had the same friends throughout my whole life. And that was a really big thing for me, because I was used to being a social butterfly. But I didn't feel that way when I got here. I felt kind of like, oh my gosh, things are getting kind of real. I don't know anyone. I moved here, and all I knew was my aunt and uncle, and that was it. So coming to Clark was probably like the scariest thing that I've ever done, but also the greatest thing that I've ever done. A week after graduation, like I said, I moved here to, for a better life. I moved in with my aunt and uncle, Stephanie and Brandon, with open arms. And I just stuck to it. I basically just went to school for classes. I didn't want to be involved. I didn't really care about making friends. I was in the mindset I could pass and be just fine if I didn't get involved. I was dead wrong. <laughs> it got really tiring and I just wanted something different. So I tried clubs. I tried programs. I was in outdoor and rec. I tried different volunteering and it was all right, but I didn't really feel like I clicked anywhere. Like I, I didn't feel like I was at home. Um, so I took classes over the summer, tried to stay busy with a job, and over the summer I found out that my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Karma is quite funny in a way. <laughs> and in a weird sense to me, I was glad that it happened, but also really, really sad, because I was losing someone in my life that was so horrible to me, but also such a crucial part of my life. She passed away a week before I was going back to Alaska to see her. We hadn't talked in months. And it was, it was a bittersweet moment to get that phone call. Of course, I cried. I let it all out. <laughs> but I think it was almost better that way because I have an image of the last time I saw her holding my little sister. And she looked proud of me because it was graduation. And I hold on to that memory more than I do the fact that I didn't get to say goodbye to her. And that, that's what I keep in my heart to remember her. Now. While this was going on, I was really stressed out, as you could probably imagine. <laughs> so I started uh, going to the mental health services here at Clark. Uh, a lovely woman named Bevan is my therapist, and she is the greatest human being on this planet. I honestly don't think I'd be here without her, because I was very depressed and suicidal, and I couldn't think about even going to class when I was thinking about how my mom wasn't here anymore. My grandpa's not here, and everyone around me is dying, or, you know, not in my life, all my friends are gone. I felt lost. But there are a lot of people that changed that, and that was this year. Kim, in the very back, she's looking at me like, oh God, don't talk. <laughs> uh, she works in registration, and she was the first person that I ever met at Clark's. She doesn't know that, but she was. And she is the one of the most funny, honest people I've ever met in my life. She goes above and beyond for every student that I've ever seen her work with. She spent 35 minutes once trying to get me on a wait list for a class. And, like, thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't be in this class without her. And just seeing how she interacts with students on a day-to-day -day basis, because I work right beside her, I'm truly impressed by you, Kim. You're a great person. <laughs> I also have two lovely bosses. 
Amy and Vanessa, they're back there as well. Um, Amy and Vanessa have the most hilarious, greatest friendship revolved around food. And I'm honestly jealous. I want a friendship like theirs someday. <laughs> but they do go above and beyond for students as well. Amy will sit down with a student and talk for over an hour to make sure that they have every need met. She will take on any task that you give her, and she's a great leader, and she's made me a better person. And Vanessa has a heart that although she may come off as cold, she is one of the nicest, <laughs> loveliest, sweetest people I've ever met. She is one badass lady. <laughs> and I owe to my bosses, both of them, Without my current student ambassador job, I wouldn't be here right now. Not only because I have to be here because I'm a student ambassador, but also because I wouldn't have this confidence to talk up here right now. My confidence went away when I moved here, but I've gained it with a vengeance since I've come back. I, I think about my current ambassador job, and I don't think I'd be here in college without it. I think it's motivated me in more ways than just one. It's made me connect with students on a level that I never thought I would connect with anyone. I've made friends, which is so great. <laughs> but also, it's given me a motivation in my life that I never knew I needed. This job is like its own community. Every time I walk in the door, someone says hello. Oh, do well, you want to go out for lunch sometime? Do you want to hang out? Let's go get dinner sometime. It's a community and also a family on its own. There, uh, everyone that I work with is so caring and loving that I can't imagine my life without them now. And like I said, clubs didn't work for me, but this job does. As a student ambassador, I have a pretty interesting perspective. I deal with students on a daily day basis, some of them pretty angry about how certain offices might treat them, or you know, they might be frustrated with the situation they're in. I remember when I moved here, financial aid was really difficult for me. I was paying for everything on my own, but my mom didn't want to give me any fast food information. My dad's not in the picture. So trying to figure out that station, like situation was really difficult for me. And a lot of students go through that. There's a lot of hoops to go through when you go to Clark, but it's worth it. I also hear a lot of good things from students though as well. It's not all bad. It's mostly great. <laughs> I hear things about how different offices affect their on, on and off campus life. I just want every office to know that I hope that you get something from my speech is that you do so much more than you think you know. A lot of this work that you guys put on a daily day day to day basis extends from college life. You're appreciated beyond belief, and I just want to say thank you from all the students here at Clark College. Yeah. genuine, heartfelt sharing. Oh, and I have no doubt your grandparents are really proud of you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love your... You made that phrase, you look at the highlights of life. I try, yeah. I know, and you do. I mean, yeah. It's really clear you do. That's a very positive outlook. Given everything you've gone through, that's got to be really motivating to the students that you work with as an ambassador. Yeah, yeah. I try to, when I talk to students, uh, just at work, they might be stressing that it's, it's so hard to be a student, and I get that. Trust me, I get it. I have, I have three classes right now, full-time student, and I have two jobs. I get the struggle. <laughs> but also I have to think about the privilege of being here and having this opportunity to have an education. I think that's what a lot of students should look at more, is that we're here. That's, that's an accomplishment on its own. Whether you're doing good or bad in school, you're making a difference somehow. You know? And did you end up at Clark because your aunt and uncle lived here? Yeah, it was actually really interesting. Like, I was like, oh, I don't really want to go to Clark. Like, oh, it's community college. Like, I kind of wanted that full college experience, even though I had no idea what that meant. I just, like, wanted that crazy campus experience. And then I started visiting those campuses, and the people that were giving tours that were actually student ambassadors as well, which is kind of funny now that you look at it, that I'm a student ambassador. But I, <laughs> I'm looked around at those campuses and I didn't really feel anything. Like in my heart, I just felt like they didn't care about the school. Why am I, why would I be interested in going here? They didn't, nothing really wowed me. Like cool, you have like a game room or something crazy or like crazy parties on the weekends. Like that's fine and all, but where's the heart in it? 
No one seemed to really care about their students. And that's why I chose here. And also because it's not far from my house, which is pretty great too. <laughs> but. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Good job. I have a question. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So what are you gonna do next? So hopefully graduate this spring. <laughs> that's the main goal right now. Um, and then I'm actually gonna come back to Clark. I like you guys so much that I'm gonna do the BA program for dental hygiene. And then <laughs> and then uh, I want to work for a couple years, just get some experience, get some you know references, kind of feel out what I want to do for a doctor program, and then go for med school. That's Wonderful. that's the goal for right now. It's always changing though. Okay, and I have two observations. Okay. One is uh, you and the office that you work in appear to have too much fun. <laughs> you should really just stop on by. You'll join the party. I, I've got my eye on it. <laughs> Especially <Yeah>. cold Amy. <laughs> and as a grandfather, I'll tell you, your grandpa is very proud of you. Yeah. 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 I will say you are an extraordinary person. And you. You're you guys great. are going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made us cry. Oh, so there you go. It's only fair, right? Uh, exactly. And... Um, your grandparents are proud of you, and so is Clark. Everywhere you go, uh, you should know that your uh, solid, bright, shining self uh, makes a difference in people's lives. I will remember you, and so will everybody else. So thank you for so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And also, my grandma doesn't know that I'm giving this speech right now, and I know this might be on YouTube, so hi, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yes,